Right, so today I'm going to do something I've not done for a wee while and that's give you a desk set up tour. Um, I think it was about two years ago or something like that. It's a wee bit of change. I'm going to run you through everything and I'm not going to bullshit you and say that this is some sort of 20 grand set up like some of the other creators do. That's just a lot of pish. Um, I don't even think this would be touching 10 grand. But anyway, lots and lots of questions on people on some of my videos asking, what's this, what's that? So I thought, do a desk set up tour and hopefully that answers all your questions. Let's get right into it. Right, so here we have my little setup, setup corner in my bedroom in its entirety. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, probably make a start from the left hand side at the TV and uh, work my way across and hopefully cover everything that I've got in my setup. Right, so first off, the TV is the the TCL C805, which is an 80 inch 4K mini LED TV. Um, I actually bought this towards the start of the year uh, after my Sony. Uh, I had a 55 inch. 4K 120Hz Sony television, um, it was actually a few years old, brilliant telly but actually started kind of just randomly powering off so something was wrong with it, the main the main board or something or something was gone in it and I uh, spent a little bit of time kind of looking up second hand parts and to be honest with you for what I would have paid for the parts I'd be as well just buying a new telly so I bought this thing um, and it was dirt cheap, never heard of TCL before, done some um, some research on it and turns out they're actually a really highly make it recommended brand at the kind of budget end and uh, this TV is absolutely superb I've got to be honest you can see my reflection in the glass which is, doesn't help but uh, the picture quality in this is actually better than the mini LED telly that I've got down the stairs which is a big 65 inch LG telly um, and I personally think the picture quality in this is far far better uh, the black levels and everything are superb considering it's a mini, OLED, uh, mini LED not quite an OLED, but for me, it does the tricks. Absolutely beautiful television. Yeah, so that's the TV. Um, next, we have the wall lights. Um, cheaped out in the wall lights. Just ended up going with the like AliExpress uh, LED panels, I think they're called. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for them. I think about 20 odd quid, maybe £25 or something like that. Not really interested in nano leafs or whatever the uh, Govey ones for the wall anyway um, so I just went with these and I think they, they do the trick absolutely superb and then what, will, what else will we cover <laughs> might as well cover the actual desk itself so the desktop uh, which is the IKEA um, Ek Bakken which is a walnut finish and the size that I've got is 186 centimeters by 63.5 deep and then it's say uh, 2.8 Eight mil, uh, two point centimeters thick, but it's a uh, solid wood desktop, which is brilliant for mounting all this stuff on. Everything is sitting on top of it, including the monitor. So I needed something a bit sturdy to take all the weight. So that's that, and then obviously you've got the, the bog standard uh, IKEA Alex drawers that the desktop's sitting on. Just got two of these, two of those, no middle leg or anything like that, because um, the desktop's pretty sturdy itself. Uh, we were talking about the desktop. We'll look underneath it, my cable management. Um, we've got some, like, hopefully you can just see it against the wall there. Some conduit that I've ran in, um, and hides the cables running along the top of the skirting board. Plugs into the power supply. A little trailing wire there behind the Alex drawer. You know, I need to sort that. But underneath, I've tried my best to do all the cable management. And again, I use some cable raceways that I got from Amazon. Um, and there's a an eight way gang extension in there which has individual switches and at the very end there's a couple of USB-A sockets uh, connections sorry and a USB-T uh, USB Type-C connection as well for charging things as well and which actually comes in quite handy because I've got a couple of things currently hooked up to that but yeah I've done the best I could with the cable management I think actually looks quite good um, right what else will we cover monitors uh, the top monitor is quite an old monitor now, it's the Acer Nitro XF25 2QX 25 inch monitor at 1080p and 240Hz This was my kind of starting off monitor, went for something with high refresh rate uh, for gaming and stuff like that But soon after playing it for a wee bit I realised it needed something bigger so uh, Through the years I've kind of had 
secondary monitors which is my primary monitor and this has always been a backup monitor and it's still to this day a backup monitor because the picture quality on it is still excellent and it's still really good for gaming although I never ever do use it for gaming but yeah that's that uh, down below is the the MSI MAG 41 QR which is a 40 inch flat screen ultra wide 1440p monitor and it has 144 hertz um, the refresh rate which can be boosted up to 160 as well uh, absolutely brilliant monitor for a price again I think it was about 350 quid or something I paid for this thing thought it was going to be weird going back to a flat monitor coming from a 34 inch curve monitor but to be honest with you I don't know, notice the difference and having that extra screen real estate is absolutely superb but that is the mag 40 what did I say it was? The Mag I keep forgetting my own, my own stuff here. The Mag 41 401 QR 40 inch ultra wide. Uh, and if you're interested, the wallpaper that I've got on the screen just now is um, the wallpaper engine. I think everybody's got wallpaper engine set up to be honest with you. But if you don't, you can get that from Steam. Right, apologies about the noises if you're hearing in the background. Loads of fucking idiots driving about this estate. Um, Right, so next, the lighting. Uh, I've already covered the wall lights, but on the back of the monitor, if I can show you here, you should be able to see the Gove gaming strip lights G1. Um, made a video on this recently. Uh, basically bought these lights to replace Corsair LS100 lights that I had them back in the monitor. Now those lights were absolutely superb lights, um, but through time, the light strips kept breaking. Um, and the mounting arrangement on them, because it was on a curved monitor, they kept kind of falling off, especially when the monitor started heating up, the sticky pads and stuff started getting a little bit um, less adhesive and falling off, and uh, they were bloody expensive, so I just thought, i seen these things, I thought I'll give them a try and see how they work, um, and I purely bought them just for the, the kind of ambient experience, you know, when they've got the, the function to mimic what's on the screen, and uh, that's why I bought these and actually worked a treat. I had a little issue at first. Um, and if you want to know what the issue was, you can pop over to the video that I've got actually reviewing these and you'll see the issue. But I was uh, glad I finally got it resolved and uh, I've got nothing but praise for them. Uh, again, I paid, I think it was £25 for these. They were on sale. Um, meant to be for a 34 inch monitor. I've got them on a 40 inch monitor and they do look absolutely superb. Um, and sorry, just one last set of lights I should have showed you. On the back of the actual the, the desktop itself, you can see a little strip of LED lights and that just gives the, the desk this kind of nice red glow at the back. Um, so, a wee bit overkill maybe with the lights, it's not everybody's cup of tea, um, but I quite like it. Again, cheap LED light strip, nothing special. I don't think I even paid any more than a tenner for it and it, it does exactly what it needs to do. Um, Okay, we also have here is the, this is the SEDA run, I think that's how it's pronounced, S-E-D-A-R-U-N, uh, desk lamp. Um, so obviously, got a little kind of charging dock here, which used to come in really, really handy because I used to be able to stick my old mouse on top of it, but the, the new mouse, I can't quite get to use it with this setup, but I'll get that sorted soon. Um, but really nice light, you can change the, the colours of the lights, the brightness and so on and it's got some extra information at the back here which you can actually turn that on um, it gives us room temperature, time date and so on if you find that handy again that was a kind of dirt cheap light from Amazon everything, well, I'm saying everything but most stuff I've got on my desk I've got from Amazon uh, speakers, these are the Edifier MR4s Absolutely fantastic speakers. Can't recommend these highly enough for the price that they are. Um, I used to have a set of Sanian SW208s, I think they were called. Little bookshelf speakers, nice uh, white wooden speakers, slightly smaller than these. They sounded brilliant. Um, not as loud um, and not as good quality, I would say, but they actually sounded fantastic for the price. But unfortunately, they actually packed in in me um, last year, I think that was. Um, which is a real, real shame because they were really, really nice little speakers um, and I decided next time I fork out for speakers I'll buy something with a little bit more quality and hopefully a little bit more reliability and that's exactly what I've done. 
Um, what else have we got? Lights. Right, so here we've got the, this is called the, the Relino PLV S116 key light. Um, obviously I've been doing YouTube for a little while. Don't have the crazy money to go splash, splashing on Elgato, stuff like that. So I just thought I would find a cheap alternative and I found this thing. And it does the trick. I um, don't know if you can see around the back here. If you can spin around the back, it's got a little, little screen on the back. You might not be able to quite see that. Tells you the colour, temperature and the brightness and so on. Um, mind your eyes, turn this on. Uh, but you can see the job that it does. Brilliant little tube light. Again, can't recommend that enough. Save yourself some pennies, some pounds. Don't bother with the key light stuff. Which I've got a damn cheek because the next thing I'm going <laughs> to show you over here, talking about stay away from the Elgato stuff, is the Elgato face cam that I've got. And that's my tried and trusty camera that I've been using for years and years and years. I did have a D, an old DSLR set up on it. Um, kind of running through a, a capture card. But uh, I've got to be honest, the quality wasn't that great. And it was just a big hideous thing as well, to be honest, a bloody ISO. So I went with this after tons and tons of reviews and to this day it's still a fantastic little camera. I've got my eye actually on the new, is it the new Osbot 2? The, the new one that seems to be doing the rounds on YouTube just now. Um, that, that thing looks absolutely excellent. Again, nice tiny small footprint, keeps everything nice, clean, clutter free. I'm really, really tempted to go with that. I'm also really tempted to splash out the cash and actually buy myself a new camera and go for the Sony... Um, ZV E10 2, which is an utterly brilliant looking camera to be honest with you. Not just to use for YouTube and stuff like that, but to use for photography outside and stuff like that. Um be as well maybe getting something that I can use in different kind of scenarios, not just YouTubing but photography and so on. Uh, what else have we got? So cover the cam, oh the cat, the actual mounts as well. People might start asking a question. So if I look below the monitor, you can only see that there's there's one monitor stand. Um holding up both the monitors and I'll cover that in a minute but around here we've actually got these little arms that actually clamp onto the monitor arm at the back of the monitor stand um, and they are the I don't know quite know, know how you pronounce this the newer 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 uh, overhead camera mounts a little bit expensive um, but plenty of flexibility um, and I've got two of them set up you can actually just see the, the logo on that one there it tells you on the website that these things open up to a maximum of, I think it's 28 millimeters. the clamps that you can see on the back there. And that actual tube that I've got is about 30 millimeters. but you can open them up enough to clamp onto bigger tubes. So I thought I'd just point that out. You might have a kind of similar desk mount like me. Um, these little things may actually clamp on. Uh, what else have we got? Sorry, I've got this written down so don't forget anything. You hear me rustling pages or oh, the chair, right? The chair is the uh, Holladl, I think you pronounce that, Holladl, Holladl ergonomic office chair. Again, not a very particular expensive chair in comparison to some of the crazy chairs you can get out there just now. Highly, highly rated on Amazon, and I've got to be honest with you, I've had nothing but good things to say about it. Unbelievably comfortable, lots of, lots of. Adjustment, flexibility, lumbar support, arm movement, even the, the seat at the bottom, the depth of the seat moves in and out, the arms move in and out, the rotate, different angles, the back rotates to different angles. It's a brilliant, brilliant uh, chair. Can't recommend it highly enough. Um, yep, so that is that. Uh, the mouse mat, that's something I've got kind of recently. The mouse mat is the Dontree um, felt desk mat. And the size of that is 100 centimetres by 40 centimetres. And I think it's only like a couple of mil thick. You can see here it's sitting up slightly and that's just because the weight is rolled up. So I'll need to get something sitting in that with a bit of weight to flatten it out. But I did have a, a Corsair um, mouse mat that had a bit of a pattern on it. And it just, I don't know, uh, great mouse mat. What? Done a trick. But um, I thought I'd go something, go with something nice and plain and simple. Just keep it all clean. A bit more adult like if you want to call it that. <laughs> uh, so that was a mouse mat. Well, we're looking at the mouse mat. In fact, I totally forgot to cover the the monitor mount. I think did I cover the monitor mount at the back. So yeah, apologies. Monitor mount. You can see at the back. You can maybe just see the label on that. That is the Duronic DM 
35V261 dual monitor arm. Now, I live in a, a rented property, and even though I've got things on the wall, it's kind of a no-no to be drilling things into the wall in a rented property. Um, and to be honest, if I had my way, I would actually have the monitors mounted on the wall. I would put holes in the wall, drop the cables down into the wall for a totally clean look, that floating look, you wouldn't need, there would be no stand at all. But I don't have that luxury, unfortunately. So I've actually, I think I've tried about three or four different stands. Um, and ultimately what I wanted to do was get the monitors as close as to the wall as possible. And you can maybe just see that the way these are mounted, that's about as close as I'm going to get. I tried ones with the, you know, the, the lifting arms, pneumatic arms and stuff like that. But because of their bulk and their size and stuff, they were still pushing the monitors away out. Um, and I had a lot of kind of issues lining the monitors up. So this particular stand, absolutely done the trick with that. So that is good. Um, we'll come down a wee bit. We'll talk about some of the other stuff. So some, just some de de decorations. Got a little 3D printed bust of Batman. Love that little thing. Um, this is actually printed in a, an ancient old 3D printer. Uh, we got my son years ago actually, still got it down the stairs. Um, started printing stuff off at the very start. Some of the stuff never turned out very well. Then I spent a bit of time actually figuring out how to do it properly and I came up with that. Um, so I'm chuffed with that. Uh, it's got centre stage in my desk. Oh, sorry, just dropping a mouse behind me. Not a mouse, a remote. Turn the TV off. Keyboard. So the keyboard is the, um, the Zooya, I think that's how you pronounce it. The Zooya uh, GMK87 keyboard. Um, this is my first custom built keyboard. Always been a bit of a kind of Corsair fanboy. Had a Corsair keyboard, Corsair mouse, and everything in my case at one point was all Corsair, apart from the, the graphics card processor, motherboard, so on. But, but all the fans, the uh, lighting, memory and everything was all Corsair at one point. So I decided to um, give this a try and I built my first custom keyboard uh, last month, in fact. Um, and I'm utterly, utterly pleased with it. I'm saying last month, actually, I think it was the start of this month. Anyway, I really, really love this keyboard to bits. So that is the, the, the body itself is the, uh, the Zoya GMK87. The keys, uh, caps themselves, they're the KBDIY, which come in a 133 set key and it's a gradient grey gradient so you see it's lighter grey going down to the darker grey side printed and again you can see the side printed letters and i actually love the way those look i think uh, i don't know what it is i, I just think it's it's brilliant looking with the side printing it's kind of keeps it nice and clean when you're looking at it from the top um lots of nice little things about this and if you're interested the switches that i'm using are the otemu i think that's how you pronounce that otemu silent peach v3 linear switches um, so when I built this thing, I think about seven of them I accidentally bent the pins on, but I just restrained the pins out, popped them back in, and then I've had no no issues since. A little LED screen up here up at the top um, that you can uh, customize to whatever you want. Um, you just uh, press function and enter. You can see there I've got some Darth Maul stuff to to match my Darth Maul wallpaper. Um, that a little Darth Maul gif. And just back to the standard screen that tells you the, the time, the date, and so on, battery level. You've got it on wireless. And this here as well, this little LED here can also be um, customised. So, beautiful, beautiful keyboard. Mouse. So, this is my newest addition to my setup. Um, I'm still running with a Corsair um, mouse, gaming mouse that I spent, again, spent a fair bit of money on. But more mouse and keyboard were, were black didn't match my setup, everything's white as you can see so that's why I kind of started buying new peripherals and I went with this just purely because the thing's phenomenal the, the reviews for it are absolutely brilliant um, I don't think there's any explaining needed for it so this is the Logitech G502 X Plus gaming mouse and again highly customizable I've still not actually got around to doing everything I want to do with it, customizing it the only thing I've done is just change the LEDs here like kind of red, white and then red to match, match the setup but uh, I've got plenty of other things I need to do with like uh, customising the buttons to suit me. So that is the mouse. Um, and I think that kind of covers everything. Uh, before I go into the PC, I'll just kind of cover some of the other decor that's in the room. So usual typical IKEA pegboard thing. I've got some little containers up here that have got uh, 
USB hard drives, I've got some um, micro SD drives in here as well, and some adapters and stuff like that. So just little little things for the uh, use for storage for little bits and bobs. Some nice fake plants, um, just because I can. <laughs> uh, and this is my go-to gaming headset, and I've had this again for years, not that long after it came out, and they're still to this day, absolutely brilliant, so comfortable, so lightweight, the sound off them superb, but that is the Steel Series Arctic 7 in white, absolutely phenomenal uh, headset. Um, just speaking of headset, you maybe noticed down here as well that that is the receiver for the headset, so basically this plugs into your PC by USB and then there's a pass through on that, so I've got 3.5mm audio jack, comes out that side, goes into the back of the speaker here. Basically what happens is, when you turn that headset on, it, it basically kills the sound to the speakers, plays it only through the headset, um, then when you turn the headset off, the, the audio comes back through the speakers again, so ideal for me. This should be in a museum, <laughs> it's the Google Pixel C um, tablet. Uh, again, I got this years and years and years ago, at the time I bought it because it was head and shoulders above everything else, it was in its price range at the time and it's lasted me really really well for all these years but finally it's ages kind of catching up with, with it, it's getting a bit on the slow side to be honest with you so uh, I may have to soon uh, replace that. Got some kind of custom uh, little joy pads that I've got here, kind of pedalised blue joy pads just for decoration, these actually belong to my kids believe it or not and just they've got new ones. I mean, uh, I've nicked them for deco, again another kind of more purpleized, pearlized one. But the actual one that I use for gaming is the Xbox Elite 2. An absolutely diamond of a gaming the controller. I love this thing to bits. And again, I'm not even going to bother getting through it with you. It's just it's been around for years and years and years, you know what it does. I love the back buttons as well, just having the option there of using them. Uh, superb. Mouse, uh, mouse gamepad, and that leaves me on to my little pride and joy, which is my PC. Right, where do I start? So, the case itself is the Fantex NV5 case. I use this to replace a Lee and Lee Lanco uh, 2 mesh. Um, I actually just sold that case yesterday, believe it or not. Um, spent a bit of time looking for a new case. And then I started seeing, it was like the the initial product reviews, not reviews, but people getting to see these hands-on when they were going to, you know, these com uh, computing conventions and stuff like that. I seen some of these being shown and I fell in love with it right away, just even in the early days and then followed up by the reviews. It just, that was the case I had to have. So Fantex NV5, you'll also notice it around the edge of the case, around here as well. I've added in the Fantex NV5 Premium DRGB Lighting Kit. Um, obviously a, an optional accessory you can add onto this case, but it actually, to me, makes it look that little bit more special. So that was a no-brainer getting that. You'll also see uh, the fans. Those are the, the Lee and Lee um, SL120 Infinity fans. And I've got eight of those in total. So the one at the back and the three at the top are acting as exhaust, so here comes at the top, here comes at the back, and then three at the side are intakes drawn air in from the side, and one at the bottom, uh, so it should have a nice air flow on it. The three at the top, they're mounted to the, um, the Lee and Lee, nearly forgot what that was called, they're the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 LCD 360 AIO, and again, Hopefully you can see, it's got the, the tubes at the corners there, at the sides, those are adjustable for different angles. Nice white tubing, it goes down to that absolutely beautiful screen there, which I've currently got displaying my CPU temps and my graphics temps and so on, and the loads on them. And I've got my little logo on the back of that as well, highly customizable. So that is that covered, what else? Uh, that's actually sitting on top of the the mobile, or the motherboard I should say, um, and that is the ROG Strix B550E Gaming. Planning to actually upgrade this. I've got stuff I'm trying to sell just now so that I can upgrade this. I want to jump for the AM4 onto the AM5 bandwagon. 
nothing wrong with this to be honest with you, he's still doing his job but uh, I just think it's time for an upgrade so I want to go with an all white motherboard and I've already seen the one that I want, just need to wait to find out what the price is and when they come out and sell and then uh, I'm going to replace the CPU, so the CPU currently is the Ryzen 9 5900X, an absolute beast of a processor for me anyway for what I do but again it's an AM4 and I'm, I'm going to jump on the AM5 bandwagon so hopefully uh, we hear some more information on the, the new 9800X3D I think that they're talking about coming out pretty soon uh, apparently at the end of October I'm hearing things about that beside that we have the four sticks of 8 gig total of 32 gig uh, RAM and that's the Corsair Vengeance RGB Black Pro and I've got that again kind of set to my colour theme a nice red and white colour theme um, graphics card is the, the Gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti Super Aero and I actually love the look of this card I'm still toying with getting the, the vertical bracket set inside this so you get to see the front of the, the power supply eh, sorry the front of the actual uh, graphics card I don't know, I, I quite like the way it is just now to be honest with you um, I'm toying with that, I'll need to think about it later on but I'm an absolute beast of a graphics card, kind of handles everything you throw at it just now obviously you could pay extra cash for a 4080 or a 4090 but I'm not a total dedicated gamer like I used to be so this does what it needs to do and I'm quite happy with that so when I do the upgrades as well you'll notice that I've got these extension cables in uh, for the power supply and you maybe notice the the one in the motherboard there as well, They're, those are black um, those came from the old PC I'm going to change those out, out for white ones as well when I do the upgrade so everything, basically everything will be white inside uh, I don't know what else I've covered um, again I've got another little 3D printed logo uh, it's just sitting on top of the PSU shroud there I love that little thing and then down below here, oops I just noticed that I've moved that by accident yeah, where is it? Where is it? Sorry about that. I don't know how I managed that. Weird. Anyway, I sat back in the place. Must have done that by accident. <laughs> so the screen there that you're seeing is a, I think it's a, an 8.8 .8 inch 1920 by 480 LCD panel, if I remember right. And again, I got that from AliExpress, and I think I paid about no more than thirty pounds for it. Bit of a gamble, but I've done a mod on it. Um, measured spaces and so on and it turns out that the space between the front of the well the back of the glass and the front of the PSU shroud is the exact same thickness as this screen and what I've done is uh, you'll not be able to see it but I do have a video on it if you're interested in going to see how I've done it but I've cut a hole with the back of the case um, using a little kind of Dremel tool and I've passed through the power cable um, which is powered up by a USB header and an HDMI cable uh, that hooks into the back of the graphics card through this um, through this hole um, but I think it's an absolutely beautiful little mod I've had lots and lots of comments on it, ask me how it's done and so on so that is that uh, and then I think I've kind of covered everything oh power supply, this is all powered by the Corsair RMX 1000X maybe a wee bit overkill but again I just decided to buy a bigger power supply just for future safety in case I uh, decide to get anything more powerful um, and I think the only thing I've not covered is the storage so the main drive um, that you can maybe see under the little heat sink there that is the Seagate Fire CUDA 532TB NVMe which I actually won in a competition um, I've also got another one uh, down below you'll not be able to really see that but that is the Western Digital Blue SN 551 terabyte NVMe drive and then around the back of the case I've also got a further two SanDisk Ultra SSDs and those are one terabyte each so in total I've got five terabytes of storage um, which does actually get eaten up fairly quickly to be honest with you and that is that I think everything is covered hopefully you've not fell asleep hey and that was it hopefully you guys liked that um, Again, if you've got any questions about any of the things that I've got in my setup, feel free to leave comments down below. And if you can, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, I think I kind of touched on it. Not really much is going to change. Uh, I think 
the motherboard and the processor and the, the RAM's about the next thing and then I, to be honest I think I'll kind of be happy where I am. I'm stuck in this little corner of my room, can't really do much more. If I had more space I could probably come up with something a little bit better but eh, you can only piss with the digger you've got to say. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you liked this one guys uh, and I'll probably be back sometime soon. See you later.